Um, well, my administrators um, were all very supportive of it. Um, they actually helped me um, have the camera. They helped. I did all the editing. I found the music. I'm, I mean, that's all me. It's mostly my production. I just had a really great team of women behind me who um, <laughs> wanted to help stop the stigma of abortion. Okay, and, and, and so hold on. So Emily, you, uh, let me let me ask a crazy question that you're going to uh, First of all, you knew you were going to take heat when you did this, right? You understand you're going to be it's it's a controversial topic. You're well aware of it. You're an abortion counselor and doing this has got to you got to be to know. My que I'm going to ask a crazy question. Okay. Did you get pregnant in order to do this video? Right. A lot of people <laughs> on Twitter said the same thing. Um and you realize that I'm going to have to laugh at that, right? Like, uh, absolutely. If, if it's laughable, I hope it is. I, I'm relieved to see you laugh. Your message was lost to me when you wrote in your essay that you were having sex, but you were not using birth control. So was your was abortion your form of birth control? And is so that the actually, message you want to put out there? So actually, what I want to clarify is that I was not uh, I did not have a a single partner like I didn't I was not in a relationship and to be honest let's not talk about the fact that hormonal birth control can be very scary to women to me it seems that you're trivial trivializing uh, something that's really traumatic for a lot of people thinking you're helping them you are helping them you're an abortion you work in an abortion clinic so you're already helping people I don't think going viral and putting a video out there is, is right, doing right. anything because I feel Leanne, like it's point taken. I, I just don't understand why people are trying to bash me on this I want to get into whether or not the video is the right thing for her to do. Uh, Judy, my question is, is anything private anymore? And it, does this trivialize this very important issue? Right. And Emily, I have a question for you to follow up on what Dr. Drew just said, which is, you know, is this trivializing it? And I, to that point, there was something that you said in your Cosmopolitan interview that this process was like giving birth to you, that it felt like giving birth, that you were humming through it. And I'm just wondering if that's trivializing women who are giving birth. And can you really compare an abortion to a birth-like process? And I was just wondering what you were thinking when you said that to Cosmopolitan. Well, um, there's a lot of questions circulating right now. Um, I would say that I've studied birth, so I'm a birth doula. I support women during their birth procedures. Birth procedures, I'm sorry, their birth, birthing experience. Um, right. And so the thing about birth is that it is personal, it is sacred, it is yours, and, and that, like, you need to be supported. It should be something that you craft with, like, having exactly whoever you want in the room with you. And so that's what I did. That's what I meant by this was as birth-like as possible. I was supported. 360 degrees by women who held my hand who said like you are strong and you are beautiful and you are making the best decision for your life and we trust you because you trust okay. yourself to describe this story as horrifying would be an understatement and if that sounds like a warning then that's exactly what it's meant to be it deals with the sexual abuse of children by satanic cults and not only that human sacrifices as well we started investigating these secret satanic cults when a British member of parliament linked them with the ritual murder of children. In this day and age, it sounded too far-fetched, as did suggestions that the same thing might be happening in Australia. But then we met Teresa. She's only 15, and for 12 of those years, she's been the victim of relentless depravity. Friends of family and strangers and my family used to rape me. Um, made me uh, abort the babies I had. Taman and Jackie, this was a disturbing discovery for this family after their loved one died. The Will County Sheriff's Office says the family's attorney contacted them on Thursday. That's what I'm told. They discovered the fetal remains inside the doctor's home. Dr. Ulrich Klopfer was the well-known abortion doctor in Indiana who died earlier this month. Police say his family was sorting through his things when they found thousands of fetal remains at the doctor's house in Creek Township. This Philadelphia abortion doctor convicted of killing three babies is being spared a potential death sentence after making a deal with prosecutors. Dr. Kermit Gosnell waived his right to appeal in exchange for a life sentence without parole. A jury found Gosnell guilty of first-degree murder in the deaths of the babies who were delivered alive and then killed with scissors. 
Well, the new Texas abortion law continues to face resistance. The Satanic Temple has filed a letter with the Food and Drug Administration arguing that abortion is a faith-based right of its members. Hey, sir, you gotta repent, sir. You gotta repent, sir, for murdering babies. Why? Because it's a sin before God. Why? Well, Stinky breath. Yeah, Why? that's pretty. That's pretty evil of you, sir. Yeah, I am. And, and I hope and pray that you. Yeah. Ah. Well, that's what you do to babies, huh? Yeah, I love it. You love it, huh? Yeah, I do. Okay, I hope that you come to Christ, sir. Oh, I never go to Christ. I hope that you come to Christ. No, sir. I don't go to Christ. Yeah, you. I you, don't listen to Christ. You, you will have a darkened heart, sir. I do have a darkened yeah. heart. Yeah. You have a darkened heart. I do. I do very, very much. And so. You will stand yeah. before God in judgment. Yes, day I will. Day. Every day. You will stand before God in judgment. Yes, I will. Every day. All of the babies that I you love have it. Killed. I love it. Yeah, keep tearing the babies. Yeah, apart. I will. Keep tearing the babies. I apart. will. Keep keep tearing the babies what? apart. Yeah. yeah, sir. The babies, their blood streams from the ground. Amidst the normal garage staples of the recently deceased Dr. Ulrich Klopfer, recycle bins, tires, and ladders were boxes. Boxes behind the luggage, as high as the windows. Boxes stacked amongst buckets and tools up to the ceiling there. Some of them wilting, some of them rotting, all of them numbered and cataloged. All of them containing fetal remains. 2,246 of them in all. All from procedures authorities say Klopfer performed at his three Indiana abortion clinics between 2000 and 2002. I would say that we employ radical political theater to draw attention to the absurdity of the pro-life movement. The Satanic Temple is an activist organization of self-identified Satanists. Founded in 2013, as a reaction to the increasing influence of the religious right in American politics. We empower women to be creative about protecting their own freedoms and access to reproductive health. It would be hard to imagine more misery and suffering than what Teresa says she's had to endure. And us kids would be made to do things with the adults and the animals and then a, a sacrifice would happen. The sacrifice? Uh, were these animal sacrifices? Animals and some um, people. guarantee most of you have never heard before. Big money is being made from the sale of fetal body parts. You know, I, I'm going to throw a number out. I would say it's probably anywhere from $30 to $100, depending on the facility and what's involved. The $30 to $100 price, that's per yes. specimen that we're talking per about, specimen. right? Yeah. Yes. The $30 to $100 price, that's yes. per specimen that we're talking per about, specimen. right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, ultimately, we executed search warrants at the office which after interviews of the workers at the location and uh, the fetuses that were recovered from the freezer of his office revealed disturbing uh, sites, sites that I have never seen in my life before. Uh, once the, the fetuses were exposed, you could see that their necks had been cut. The baby's necks had been cut. Um, there were so many other uh, disturbing evidence within the clinic now, were, these, were some of these babies actually born alive and he killed them? Yes, sir. Several of the babies were born alive, which he was ultimately charged with their deaths. Three right, of so which he was he, he was, was doing late-term abortions in Pennsylvania laws, no abortion after 24 weeks. He, I understand, made more than a million dollars a year catering to mostly poor women who were desperate. They came in. He didn't care what the term was. And if he had to birth the baby and kill the baby, he would do that and you found baby body parts, you found blood all over the place, and then his own people turned against him and testified against him. Is that correct? Yes, sir, that is correct. Is there an estimate of how many babies that he destroyed? At this point, Bill, he was performing abortions for a very long time. I, I, I would estimate there have to be in the thousands um, that, that he killed. During these ceremonies, was Satan the devil ever referred to? He was called Lucifer. Um, 
What did they say about the devil, about Lucifer? That um, killing the people made him happy. Sacrifices to please the devil. According to Teresa, the worst rituals took place at a house somewhere in the country. It was big, you know, expensive. From the front, it looked like a castle. You know, it had a long drive and big double wooden doors. Do you think they were rich people then? Very rich. This really happened, you're quite sure of that? Yeah. The police don't think Teresa made up a story. Some of the cult members are to stand trial. Five men have been charged with rape. As for Nan, the grandmother, she's 61 and lives in this council flat in South London. She's charged on seven counts of aiding and abetting rape and two counts of performing abortions on Teresa. If you're finding this hard to believe, so did I at first. But then there are the medical reports, evidence of sustained sexual abuse. And there's this, a statement prepared for 60 Minutes by Teresa's psychiatrist. It says, in my opinion, Teresa's account is not the product of a psychotic illness, nor the figment of a fertile imagination. I believe her to be telling the truth. Members of this satanic temple and pro-life groups were actually clashing when it came to abortion rights, as Utah's access to abortion has been questioned. This is baby boy B. They found his body frozen in one gallon spring water bottle. He was at least 28 weeks when he was killed. Baby C was moving and breathing for 20 minutes before an assistant came in and cut the spinal cord. She did it just the way she had seen a good doctor do it so many times. Hey, I, I adopted two children. Oh, good for you, white savior. Aren't you so proud? You're They're not white. white. He's, he's not exactly, white. he's but not he's white. white. Exactly, he's you're a white, white savior. You think that it is the white man's duty to fix everybody's problems, right? How because many you did adopt? You adopt? How, many? How many did I adopt? I kill my kids. It's against the law. Somebody gets raped by somebody and they're like, I, I'm a 16 year old and I can't have this baby. Think you should keep it? It's a baby. Yeah. If someone was raped and she gave birth and she decided to kill her three year old child. Now, despite the Satanic Temple's name, it largely functions as an activist group that fights against religious-based policy here in the U.S. Now, the organization says it's already in litigation against Texas regarding restrictions to abortion access. They describe the facility as, um, as quite interesting. Scattered throughout, it says in cabinets, the basement in a freezer, in jars and bags and plastic jugs where fetal remains. I've seen um, loads of babies killed there, just newborn babies or aborted ones which were only small. What happened to the pregnancies, to the babies? Um, they were aborted by my nan or by one of the doctors at the house. There were doctors there at that house? Yeah, there was um, two I think. Yeah, and a, and a nurse. What would happen uh, to the fetuses, the unborn babies? They used to be taken away most of the time, and one time the baby was taken out of me and then killed in front of me. Because it was still alive. And then, uh, what would happen? Well, after they killed it, they would eat it. But we were also made to eat it. Did they ever say they might kill you? Uh, they threatened to kill my little girl, who, when I left, was still at the house. A friend? Huh? What little girl? My little girl, Alex. She's about four now. You mean you had a child? Yeah. How old were you when you had that child? Eleven. Mm. 
the Satanic Temple's rituals adhere to our tenets, which value science and assert bodily autonomy. As an expression of our deeply held beliefs, the Satanic Temple has created a religious ritual that involves terminating an unwanted pregnancy during the first trimester. The religious abortion ritual involves the recitation of our third and fifth tenets, along with a personal affirmation during the abortion procedure. The ritual provides spiritual comfort and affirms bodily autonomy and self-worth. The Satanic Temple proudly announces to all of its followers that within the states that have enacted the Religious Freedom Restoration Act, religiously performed abortions are exempt from legal requirements that are not medically necessary. What we're talking First about, right? Yeah. Yes. How much of a difference can that actually make if you if you know what kind of so what's it, expected or what we need versus? It makes, it makes a huge difference. I, I'd say a lot a lot of people want liver. Mm -hmm. And for that reason, most providers will do this case under ultrasound guidance, mm -hmm. so they'll know where they're putting their forceps. Kind of re-limiting step of the procedure is calvarium. Calvarium, the head is basically the biggest part. Most of the other stuff can come out intact. Right. It's very rare to have a that doesn't have enough dilation. To, the to bring the function, to bring the body cavity out, exactly. intact and all that. Um, so then you just kind of cognizant of where you put your brassicas. Um, you try to intentionally go above and below the thorax so that, you know, we've been very good at getting far as long liver. Mm -hmm. Because we know that, so I'm not going to crush that part. I'm going to basically crush below, I'm going to crush above, and then I'm going to see if I can get it all intact. The blindness of so many to this moral atrocity has many sources, but is finally to be traced to the seductive ways of evil advanced by Satan. Jesus says he was a murderer from the beginning and has nothing to do with the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks according to his own nature, for he is a liar and the father of lies. I think that's exactly right. Which means that the sacrifice of our sons and our daughters today is in a very true and a profound sense a sacrifice to demons, to Satan. The religious part has gone because this is a secular Western world and of course Satan doesn't want um, abortion to be laughed at, so of course he's not going to make it a religious ritual. He wants me to be laughed at so that he gets the upper hand when I say it's to demons and people smirk. That's what, they, that's what Satan wants. He's real happy for the secular world not to believe in him. Real happy as long as they just keep sacrificing their children to him.